If you guys saw my video last week, you know that I bought an entire box of Gladiator's Assault Special Editions. I've already opened two of them, there's now eight left, and in today's video we're going to open up two more. And I just want to say, oh my gosh, you guys have been so supportive with this series. I can't believe the, I mean, I know the whole pack opening thing is kind of a meme at this point, but I am uh, legitimately excited to go through these Gladiator's Assault packs. This is one of my favorite sets, it means a lot to me, and it had a big impact on the childhood version of me playing Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day lots of cool archetypes in here and uh, it's cool pulling cool secret rares and ultimate rares we didn't pull an ultimate rare in the last opening but we did pull a very nice secret rare and we pulled some miscut cards as well pretty sweet stuff i do want to mention um just briefly a couple people mentioned that in the comment section like oh i'm ruining the value by opening these and uh, while that is technically true you really can't pull unless you pull exactly like necroface or magic formula it's really hard to actually make your money back on these special editions they're pretty expensive uh, as they're pretty darn old actually and I think that's fine um, I think uh, it is cool collecting items and keeping them sealed but as someone that enjoys Yu-Gi-Oh cards not just the Yu-Gi-Oh packaging I actually want to see what's inside of them sort of get the nostalgia trip from that so we're gonna open up these two and then also um, I mentioned that I bought two Lost Millennium packs these were kind of a throw-in with the, the bigger purchase that I did these are first edition packs which is kind of crazy you don't see a lot of these I'm told these aren't scaled I'm pretty sure that that's true the, it seems like there's a lot of these packs floating around i'm not sure what it was about the lost millennium but i'm told they're not scaled so maybe we can pull something crazy probably not though but we'll still take a look at those and um <laughs> i should say the reason probably not isn't so much because i think they're scaled but just because it's so much uh, harder to pull holographic cards in these old sets but the uh, the goal now that we've already pulled an uh, or a secret rare is that I'd really really like to pull an ultimate rare. I mean that is one of the greatest things about opening old packs is that they actually have ultimate rares. And I mentioned it in the last opening, but just in case you didn't see it, the uh, the ultimate rares for the Gladiator's Assault and for a lot of these older sets, um, you can get any card that is super or ultra as an ultimate rare. Uh, in some of the sets before this, and some of them is it just before this or just after this um it's, it's just before us i believe you can pull uh even rares as uh, ultimates but uh, that kind of went away the reason that went away by the way is that for every time that you have a really good rare that's like an ultimate rare, th i'm thinking of things like volcanic sh uh not volcanic shell yeah volcanic shell um every time you have a card like that that actually is pretty good as an ultimate rare, and it's cool that it's uh an ultimate rare instead of just a rare uh for every one of those you have like 10 just garbage rares so it really could make or break your box depending on which uh rare you pull as an ultimate rare also i wonder if uh these boxes are mapped because i just noticed that we also pulled a vortex trooper and a phantom of chaos just like in the last video so i wonder if every other one in the box is um every is each of the promo cards that's pretty cool though some people asked about why uh vortex trooper is an aqua i don't really know the answer to that question i mean konami can kind of pick whatever they want to but this card definitely looks i mean i get why it's aqua but i think it definitely seems like it should be a machine um i mean it looks almost identical to card trooper well that's not true it's not almost identical but it's pretty close um let's do do that i want to keep track of which uh boxes which we'll do the vortex trooper pack so uh, as always with these special editions these older ones they have two of the packs that it's like named after so in this case gladiator's assault and then one uh older pack so we have dark crisis so we'll kind of go through here lots of cool stuff in here namely gladiator beasts um still looking for an old uh, just pulling a sheep cloud would be super exciting but pulling an ultimate rare sheep cloud while very unlikely would be very exciting we have uh gladiator's return stealthroid nice cloudian nimbus man witch doctor of sparta and oh nice clouding zero stratus this is a fantastic card i really wish that this is one of the sets that you could do the uh, rares in ultimate rare because i would love this card as an ultimate i really do love cloudians i know that probably sounds like a, a joke to people that only know me as like a mostly competitive player but i actually adore the clouding deck i think that deck is so cool not very good but it's pretty cool see not every deck has to be competitive for me to enjoy it all right the next one we have Gladiator Beast Battle Hailbird. What does this even do? Equip only a Gladiator Beast monster. One at attack, destroy one spell or trap card at the end of the damage up. Nice. There's all these like, Gladiator Beast equip spells that sort of synergize with them, but they're not that great. Um, Cloudian Squall. Gladiator Beast Hippolymus, which we've talked about a little bit in the last video. Disarm. And Gladiator Beast Spartacus. 
Oh, good, good old uh, level five Glider to Beast monster that you can't really do anything with if you draw. And we have Glider to Beast Dimakari. Man, this card, I don't believe it saw play. Maybe it saw play as like a one of, but I remember playing this card a lot because uh, it was one of the common Glider to Beasts, and you could just kind of cheese people because they can attack twice. That's kind of a lot of damage sometimes. Cloudian Ghost Fog, Summon Cloud, and a Glider to Beast Battle Gladius. We will open the Dark Crisis. I'm trying to think how old the Dark Crisis was when this came out. It must have been at least a year old, right? Because I feel like, I don't know, I guess I don't know my... That was like a little bit before my time. I mean, I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! at the time. I wasn't like buying packs or going to sneak peeks or anything. Um, so I don't know how much older the Dark Crisis set is compared to the Gladiator's Assault. But it'd be kind of interesting to learn about that. Uh, so we have Contract with Exodia, which is how you summon the card on the cover. Goblin of Greed, which I think we pulled last one too. Uh, <laughs> as long as this card remains on the field, neither player can activate an effect by discarding from his or her hand. Pretty weird card too. Uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with the pot cards. Kind of weird. Archfiends were played that Infernities for a little bit. Incans incandescent Ordeal. And Guardian Bow or Bayou. Is it Bayou? I have no idea. But that's yeah, the rare there. Rod of Silence KS. Despair from the Dark, pretty funny card. Final Attack Orders, <laughs> man, what a what a card. This is a card that causes many illegal activations because it causes some infinite loops. Oh, nice, we actually pulled, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter for value, but we did pull both the Guardian and the, uh, the, the, the Equip Spell that goes with that Guardian in the same pack. That's kind of neat, you don't really see that too often. Um, yeah, I mean, we didn't pull any Hollows out of that, those uh, packs there, but that's not super surprising. Um, the last video was like a super big anomaly that we pulled like a secret rare out of the first pack that was crazy just because uh of how hard it is not only to pull any holographic card but especially a secret rare of these older packs so we have no entry cloudian turbulence very important cloudian probably the best cloudian monster uh well maybe storm dragon's pretty good too nimbus man again spirit of the samurai look how old this card is a lot of people think this is like one of the newer ones but it is not i guess not a lot of people but uh some people might think it's one of the newer ones it's kind of funny in duel links because they've all been released sort of next to each other so you have uh six samurais the six samurais they got so many support like this is this isn't even the first set that they got support in those um storm of neos or strike of neos i mean um so you have like the original six samurais you have the legend six samurais like what five years later then you have the uh, the secret six samurais like five years after that so pretty crazy and another gladiator beast spartacus wow spartacus is here can't wait to make that amazing gladiator beast deck with spartacus uh truckroid release from stone which I remember we pulled a ton of in the last video and fog control the next gladiator's assault spartacus never really took off yeah i definitely just when you have a Gladiator Beast deck, you definitely want to be able to normal summon or set all of your Gladiator Beast monsters, and this one requires a tribute, so it's just way too slow, um, with really no real benefit, because the uh, Fusion Monster made wasn't that popular or good. Got that guy, Detonator Cell A, Clouding Turbulence, Rainstorm, Clouding Card, Natural Disaster, Evil Hero, <laughs> Infernal Gainer. While that takes me back, I really thought that Evil Hero was like the next big thing. I remember they had Malicious Edge, they had uh, the Prodder, what is it? Is it Prodigy or something? Whatever the, the Cyber Dragon one is, is kind of cool. Um, during your main phase one, you can move this card from play and select one face of Fiend Monster you control. That monster can attack twice during each battle phase, special summon this card face attack mission. During your second stand my phase, average effect. Gosh, this is funny. I just, the cards that they printed back then are just so specific and so not good in most situations. It's pretty weird. Um, Glad you're doing B Speciari over limit, which is actually a clouding card, right? No, it's not. It's a normal card. Uh, pay 500 life points special summon from both players' graveyards as many normal monsters as possible. Thousand. Okay, I don't know when that's ever gonna work, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah, the evil heroes um, never really took off. I think uh, some people mess around with like the Dark Gaia deck, but realistically, that deck wasn't very competitive and was super bricky because uh, it turns out the the rocks and fiends with the most attack also happen to be ones that you can't really normal summon or special summon in reliable ways so you're playing like Valkyrion and stuff just to get it to the highest attack possible uh gaga gigo morale boost kelvic again sakuratsu armor nice nice this was a fantastic card back then i love sakuratsu armor great card oh my god <laughs> 
Oh, wow, these pack opens are just nuts. Um, reflect Bounder out of a Dark Crisis pack. Keep in mind that this is not like a, pulling a Reflect Bounder out of like the Legendary Collection like version of Dark Crisis. This is an actual old school, it's not first edition, but it's an old school Dark Crisis pack. And we just pulled a freaking Reflect Bounder. Oh my gosh, that card is... Man, that's cool. These these openings are so much fun. Man, Pandemonium, Final Attack Orders, uh, Pandemonium Watch Bear, and Falling Down. Man, I can't believe we pulled a Reef like Bonner. These uh these special editions are just like crazy so far. It is kind of cool when you have like the the different set in your special edition, so you get to see some older cards or what I presume were older cards. I think Dark Crisis must have been like, at least a year old when this came out. Um, gosh, it's funny though. Reef like we've gotten pretty lucky with our pulls. We'll open um both the Lost Money packs though. Just to see, well, because I don't really know what else I put these in. I think the uh, the Kaiba starter deck thing will be like its own video, so there's no reason to hang on to these Lost Millennium packs. We have Heat of the Fire Charmer. Hey, Heat is still relevant in 2019. Not this one, but <laughs> the same card or the same character on the same card. Level Conversion Lab. Elm to Claim and my favorite Elm to Hero Monster. Erica the Water Charmer. Ultimate oh, is super nice. Ultimate Insect level 7. If this card was special in my effect of Ultimate Insect level 5, as long as this card remains face up on your side of the field, decrease the attack and defense. Wow, broken. This is that video I made a while ago about um, level monsters, and I get so many comments you guys just wouldn't even believe from people defending the ultimate insects in particular for being like good examples of level monsters. Really funny stuff. I haven't ever done, I don't think I've ever done a commenters don't understand level monsters video. Um, there aren't that many bad comments on that video. Most of them are just like, yeah, these cards are fun, but not very good, which is perfectly fine. But uh, there are actually a significant amount of comments defending ultimate insects specifically, which is hilarious. Oh, nice. Battery charger. Man, this card, first edition battery charger mint condition is actually really cool. Big battery man fan, and I remember having to pick these up. Really good with 9 volt, really good with, um, what is the new one called? I don't even know. Oh, solar. Uh, sorry, just seeing that card is like a thunder dragon card, not a battery man card, but it took off, so the battery charger is really good. Rock bombardment. Moya and Scepter Cans, definitely pronounced that wrong. I'm sure I'll get comments about it. Gift of the Martyr, DD Survivor. Man, okay, so this set, by the way, I mean, we don't have any more packs of it to pull. This was one of the sets where you could pull the rares as ultimate rares. Ultimate DD Survivor is an amazing looking card. Remember, I used to have a play set back in the day. This card used to be very good, very competitive, right alongside like DD Scout Plane and stuff. The, oh, man, a little bit too slow these days, but still very, very cool. We got some stuff there, some karate cards. Yeah, the, the, the whole DD archetype, even without like even if macrocosmos and dimensional fissure were at three you probably wouldn't see this card anymore because it's just too slow but this thing was really deadly like 800 attack and it just your opponent can never kill it really good card really good value card for old school Yu-Gi-Oh. but uh, anyway that's this pack opening of gladiators assault special edition oh my gosh we've gotten so lucky with these special editions we've actually managed to pull a secret rare in the last video and an ultra rare in this video that is just like <laughs> it's so unlikely so i'm sure the next one will just pull all rares but uh pretty cool stuff hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as i I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.